testimony is about an american prosecutor bill ten boom who was recruited to go to the international criminal court in holland to investigate the alleged murder of four hundred gypsy refugees in a refugee camp ten years earlier in bosnia how's that for one sentence i was in the hague at a reception in the year two thousand and i found myself in a circle of american lawyers who were working at the various criminal tribunals that operate in the hague and they were all like you gotta write a book about this place you gotta you know you the the cases the back channel stuff what goes on in the court the personal politics and uh... as i say usually when people come up to me and say i've got a great case for you to write about it's just amazing it's a horrible injustice they're talking about their divorce but uh... this sounded a little more promising to me and uh... i just always kept the idea in mind you know i guess what surprised me uh... is how formal a place the international criminal court is and uh... you know american prosecutors tend to cut through a lot of stuff and i guess they may have permission from the courts to do that uh... and at the icc because of all the political problems that surround the court uh... it's just all by the book and uh... things go on investigations go on forever trials go on forever and uh... you know justice delayed is justice denied so that that's a problem there that sort of surprised me the idea that you're going to do something which at the first level you mean to be entertaining uh... about war crimes is it is it's it's a challenge um, and uh, my agent confessed only after she read the first draft you know uh... i really thought you were crazy when you said you were going to do this and uh, when i look back at the book I, I understand why she said it but i was you know i'm still happy i did it and i feel you know certainly that i succeeded in explaining a lot of complicated stuff and i think i did it in a way um, that you know has a continuing element of suspense Right. There was a lot that um, I didn't know that you know just blew me away. I mean, I knew less than I should have about the Bosnian War. I had no idea that the Roma had been slaves for four centuries in Romania. Um, you know, I, it, there was a lot of a lot of stuff I learned that um, I was sort of amazed that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Were you, had you already been interested in the Roma people? And I became interested in the Roma um, about 45 years ago. I had a relative who was in the hospital, and I would visit him regularly. <clears throat> and one day I walked in, and the waiting rooms in the hospital were full of um, people whom I recognized as gypsies, as, as Roma. And uh, then one day the gypsies were gone. And I knew that the person they'd been standing vigil for clearly had died. But not only were the gypsies gone, but so were all the ashtrays that used <laughs> to be in the waiting rooms, because in those days you could still smoke. And my response to that, um, instead of the usual kind of you know bigoted uh, reaction, was to say, there is something that goes on with these people that I don't understand. They've got a value system different than my own because why would you engage in behavior that is going to make you unwelcome in a place like a hospital where you and your children, uh, the people you love, are all going to show up eventually in, in need of care? And uh, so I was really eager to get um, to get some purchase on on that very different value system. Yeah. 
you know, the, the, every book presents a different challenge. And if you've got good, if you've got good editors, and I've had very good editors, um, then the notes are going to be different from, from book to book. And, uh, you know, Deb worked through this book. Uh, first she was like, this character needs some more work. And uh, so that was the first level. Uh, and then, uh, then it was questions about particular plot loops. Um, you know, I don't think that's really working, and can you rethink that? Uh, and then ultimately, of course, it got down to slimming down the book. Uh, and, you know, I was, you, at every draft, it's the way you think you want it to be. And so, you, I, I think every writer probably recoils at first, um, but, you know, thinking about it, I thought she was right. And uh, so, I incorporated the comments and then we moved on. I, I, the only part of this that was amusing was that um, I've never missed a deadline before, but uh, with this book, it was so research intensive that uh, I ended up six weeks late. And that threw me into another publishing cycle. And what that did was give Deb more time to edit. So I'd send in a draft, and she's, well, I've got something else. And I was like, this is the last time I'm ever going to miss a deadline. <laughs> um, I'm be beginning to get a pretty firm idea. It was funny. I ran into Nelson DeMille yesterday, and uh, you know, I really enjoy Nelson. And I, we were talking about different things in life, and I told him about one of the scenes that I'm anticipating, and he was like, oh, that's a great scene. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, gosh, I hope I don't read that in Nelson's <laughs> next novel. <laughs> but it's real enough that I can start discussing it with friends. Oh, great. So. Exciting. And we'll do that um, as a deadline, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be really good.